alternate universe, the bizarro world, the twilight zone. When it comes to football, they are all quite real, if only in the mind of Dave Damashek. This is not the NFL. This is the NFL. Who's ready for another edition of the NFL? You are great. Let's do it. This time we'll take a look at how massive crowds at the 2012 Denver Broncos training camp were directly affected by the 1983 draft. We now know thousands upon thousands of orange-clad onlookers turned out to get a glimpse of new QB Peyton Manning. But if John Elway, the first overall pick in the 1983 draft, hadn't refused to sign with the team that picked him, those fans would have been like a tree and not been there. Here's why. Back in 83, there were heaps of collegiate QBs making the NFL GM swoon. Danny Marino, Champagne Tony Eason, Jim Kelly, Todd Blackledge, and I guess Ken O'Brien, right, Jets fans? But the Baltimore Colts, who had the first overall pick in the draft, really liked Stanford's rifle arm kid named Elway. How much did they like him? So much they drafted him even after he told him he'd rather play hot corner for the Yankees before he'd play QB for them. On a personal note, I'd be more than happy to be a professional third baseman or quarterback. Either one. I'll even be a long snapper. I'll take the veteran minimum. Seriously, somebody please just give me a call. Anywho, Baltimore ultimately gave in Dalway's wishes and dealt him to Denver. But let's say they call his bluff instead and let him go play minor league baseball. After spending the summer breaking Michael Jordan's strikeout records, Elway would have been chomping at the bit to wear the white and blue helmet by the time training camp started. The tale of two horsies, one named Colt and the other one Bronco, retold. It's the best of times in Baltimore, the worst of times in Denver. With the resulting enthusiasm that pervades Charm City, owner Bob Ursay never even considers uprooting the team in the middle of the night to move him to Indy. But all in all, the destiny of the horseshoe is looking up. Meantime, in the mid-90s, Cleveland owner Art Modell decides he wants to move the Browns. Baltimore Ravens? We'll hear of them never more, or even in the first place for that matter, because they could never have existed with the Colts still in town. Instead, the Browns moved to Indianapolis and become the Pilgrims. Why Pilgrims? Well, if Baltimore could name its team after a character created by local author Edgar Allan Poe, then Indy can name its team after a character created by its local author, Kurt Vonnegut. So Pilgrim, as in Billy Pilgrim, from Slaughterhouse-Five. What, you didn't get that? Anyway, the Pilgrims get rolling after they draft a QB prodigy named Peyton Manning. While Elway finally gets a couple rings at the twilight of his career, thanks to the breakout running of a young tailback wearing the number 30, Amon Green. Indy thrives for more than a decade, till Manning hurts his neck and is forced to sit out the 2011 season. Elway, now in charge of football operations for the Colts, bets his team can still ring a couple seasons out of the future Hall of Famer Manning. And blue number 18 jerseys cover the hills around Baltimore's Owings Mills training camp as the Colts get ready for a new era. Oh, and as for the Broncos fans, they get to cheer for Kyle Orton. Yay. Sorry, that's the NFL. This is the NFL.